How did the earth that we live on today go from being a nightmarish lava ball into the beautiful place that we see us today? How did the moon go from being a piece of earth into being the thing that lights up our sky? And when do we come into the picture? When did life start? When did people come about? All these questions and more will be answered in this new series. So in the last one that we did, it was on the Big Bang. And we did that for six episodes. And now episode seven goes into the next series on the evolution of the Earth, starting with the Hadean Eon. So today we're going to time travel back to the origins of Earth on Down the Line. Alright, welcome back to Down the Line. I'm your host, Pete. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about the Hadean Eon, the first evolutionary eon of Earth. And to start, I thought we'd talk about the International Committee on Stratigraphy. And I enunciated that word pretty hardcore because uh, it's just a really weird word to pronounce for me for some reason. But uh, the commission is also called the ICS, just for short. Um, it's an organization that concerns itself with stratigraphy, geological, and geochronical matters on a global scale. Stratigraphy so studies rock layers, and geological studies refer to solid rock. So basically, the ICS are a bunch of dudes obsessing over old ass rocks. They define the eons and eras of Earth and how long they lasted based on these ancient rocks. So the Hadean Eon was a geological eon of the Earth predating the Archean, which is the second eon. It begins with the formation of the Earth about 4.6 billion years ago and ended, as defined by the ICS, 4 billion years ago. Because few geological traces of the Hadean Eon remain on Earth, there are no official subdivisions, which are called eras. But uh, in the next Eon of Earth, in the next episode, we're going to be going into the multiple eras. So this one doesn't have one, so this whole episode is just kind of one era of the Eon, if that makes any sense at all. The term Hadean comes from Hades, the Greek god of the underworld, which I would say is accurate because of the hellish conditions prevailing on Earth at the time. The planet had just formed and was still very hot because of its recent accretion and frequent collisions with asteroids and other solar system bodies, one such collision actually attributing to the formation of our moon, which should have caused melting of one or two regions of the Earth. So at this point in time, Earth is just constantly getting hit by these giant rocks, which, yeah, you would not want to live at this period of time. It would be, it would be hell, like, just like the name kind of implies. So we're going to talk about the atmosphere and the oceans. And I guess, actually, it's it's still kind of a, a theory right now, but they are thinking, scientists right now, that there might have been oceans on this fucking lava rock, which is just insane. Studies of zircons have found that liquid water must have existed as long ago as 4.4 billion years ago, very soon after the formation of Earth. And I think zircons are just little crystals, um, ancient crystals that uh, scientists look at from, like, the Hadean era which I think are the only, like, rock samples that we even have from that time period. I don't think there's anything there. It's it's so long ago, and all these, you know, rocks are not there anymore. This requires the presence of an atmosphere, these uh, zircons and the liquid water. You have to have an atmosphere to have water. The cool early Earth theory pr- covers a range from about 4.4 to 4.0 billion years, just about the Hadean eon uh, itself. Earth's present composition suggests that when a giant Mars-sized object struck the Earth, creating the moon, there was not complete remelting, as it is difficult to completely melt and mix huge rock masses. So, just before I even go any farther, we talked about this in uh, the solar system, but yeah, a huge Earth-sized, or a Mars-sized object hit Earth, actually tearing off a piece of it, and I guess a mixture of this Mars-sized object and Earth are what actually made the moon. And the impact was so strong that whatever was around it, all these rocks were just vaporized. Which is just hardcore, but I thought that was uh, very, very interesting, especially when that contributes to the moon that we have today. A fair fraction of material should have been vaporized by this impact, creating a rock vapor atmosphere around the young planet. Which is not an atmosphere you'd want to breathe. I assume it would be like trying to breathe next to a volcano. Like you're just trying to breathe all this rock in. It just wouldn't be... uh, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do it. You'd, you'd die, obviously. The rock vapor would have condensed within 2,000 years, leaving behind hot volatiles, which probably resulted in a heavy CO2 atmosphere, 
with hydrogen and water vapor, another atmosphere you do not want to breathe in. Like fucking breathing in poison. <laughs> Liquid water oceans existed despite the surface temperature being a fucking death trap because of atmospheric pressure caused by the heavy CO2 atmosphere, or more aptly named, poison hell. As cooling continued, subjection and dissolving in ocean water removed most CO2 from the atmosphere and made this world less of a horrifying place to live in. I also thought I'd talk about a September 2008 study of zircons, which found that Australian Hadean rocks hold minerals pointing to the evidence of uh, plate tectonics as early as 4 billion years, although this theory is still being looked into. But if the theory is true, then the time when Earth finished its transition from having a hot, molten surface and atmosphere full of carbon dioxide to being very much like it is today, you know, actually breathable, can be traced back to about 4 billion years ago. The actions of plate tectonics in the oceans trapped vast amounts of carbon dioxide, thereby eliminating the greenhouse effect and leading to a much cooler surface temperature and the formation of solid rock and possibly even life. So the plate tectonics in the oceans trap carbon dioxide, which gets rid of the carbon dioxide uh, atmosphere, leading to you know the formation of an oxygen atmosphere, which is what we breathe, so that's kind of where life uh, starts. And this eon actually ends with the collision that formed the moon, advancing us into the Archean a eon in the next episode. So these episodes, uh, the eons and the eras in the eons, are going to be more about, I think, the atmosphere and the way that the Earth, uh, you know, managed itself at that time. As well as, like, when people started and everything like that. Not just people, but life in general. Uh, that's kind of how these episodes are going to be structured. Not in a very, very linear way, just because, I mean... I don't see really how you could do a linear way with this right now. I mean, as we go on, it might get better, but I hope you guys liked this episode. And uh, in the next episode, like I said, we'll be going to the Archean Eon and talking about the beginning of life. <laughs>